Let's go now to the Josh Hart move. This will be simpler to break down. Josh Hart goes to the New York Knicks and Tom Thibodeau has a new favorite player. <laughs> yeah, that was my my first my first tweet was uh Tibbs is going to play in 45 minutes. Um this is like <laughs> this is like the Tom Thibodeau player. And my follow-up yeah. tweet was if Taj Gibson was 6'5", he'd be Josh Hart. And um yeah, <laughs> like I think I personally so what's interesting to me like I really liked this move for them. Um, yeah, like they didn't really give up all that much, in my opinion. I think obviously, again, a lot is going to go into they want they'll want to resign him. I don't know if you saw the uh Jalen Brunson's reaction to uh to the trade happening, which was cool. Obviously, they played together at Villanova, so you I, yeah. I think there's incentive for 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 Josh to want to resign there too. I, you know, again, have to see it play out before we know for sure, but um, I think it's fascinating to me because on one hand, like I I like what he brings to this roster, even if he's not shooting the ball a ton or shooting it well. Like I think he just does things that are positive. Like he move, he can drive the basketball. He's going to make good decisions. He's going. He's a good passer. He's going to rebound the hell out of the ball, um, and be a very good defensive player, both on and off the ball. And that matters, especially for what Tibbs wants to do. Because like he, you need guys who can cover ground and are going to cover ground correctly. Um, and that's Josh Hart to me. Like he's so good at making rotations timely. Um, and covering large amounts of distance. And that's, again, like especially with the kind of defense they play, that works great. Um, so much of the offense is you have to be intuitive. You have to move without the ball. Otherwise, the offense sucks. Like that's why things didn't work with Cam Reddish. Like I think he tried very hard to make things work himself. But part of the issue with Cam is if he's not shooting the ball well, it's kind of like, okay, well, what are you getting? Like he's, he's yeah. not really super great as a cutter. Again, that doesn't work in the offense. It's not a great decision like, maker. Yeah, that's why Emmanuel quickly and – Quentin Grimes have looked good in the offense because they know how to move without the ball. And so I think what makes this just so hard for me is like, I like this move. I just get, as time continues to go on, I get like less and less enthused with Tibbs as the Knicks head coach. I know <laughs> they're playing well right now. I know things are yeah. looking good, but like, I just, I think that there is an extra gear that can happen if you remove some of the rigidity, because like I tweeted out a lineup yesterday, I was like, man, IQ, uh, Grimes, Hart, insert player, and Mitch Robb is like a, a Voltron hustle lineup. And I had a bunch of Knicks fans. Like, well, you, well, yeah, exactly. I, I didn't, yeah. I just, I just put insert player. Cause I was like, all right, well you have like just four guys who are like, you know, not so without, without the ball. Um, and are going to play their asses off defensively. And like, I, so I didn't even think Obi immediately as I had to follow up. I'm like, yeah, you got to include Obi in that. But like, more importantly, I was like, dude, I had so many fans be like, he's never going to play that line. I was like, you're right. Like, that's part of the problem. <laughs> like, I, I, like, I hope that we see it. I hope that because he believes in, in, in heart that much, he's going to play him. Um, but I think part of what I'm, I'm like, okay, well, is, is Obi Toppin playing less now? Um, is Quentin Grimes' role somehow going to decrease? Yeah. What does this mean? Um, so, like, I, on, on the one hand, like, you add a very clear rotation player who I actually think should, I mean, might might well start for them. Um, and, like, I, yeah. I think that's a good addition. But, like, what does that mean for the rest of the stuff? You know, are you just enabling Tibbs a little bit more to play to what he wants? Um, so it's it's interesting. But, like, again, I, I really liked it for them. I think that so I really like this move. Eric Weiss in the comments. Shout out Eric. Just good dude. Just yeah. Um Eric mentioned that he thought this was the best move of the deadline. I think it's really good. It's hard for me to get past Kevin Durant. It's the best yeah. move of the deadline. Yes. Yeah. But I don't disagree with the idea of this being a really good move for the Knicks because I think it gives them a lot more lineup versatility as much as anything. Like Josh Hart, I, A is I think he's going to come off the bench and the reason I think he's going to come off the bench is the weird thing that they actually quite need, despite the fact that they have these, you know, energy players and, and guys who really get after it, they could use like rebounding and energy and like kind of toughness in that yeah. uh, in that second unit. It feels like to me a lot of the time. Not to say the second unit isn't tough, but I do think that it will be beneficial for them to have someone that just crashes the glass constantly, right? Uh, yeah. And in that second unit as well, like they play Quentin Grimes with that second unit. Sometimes Emmanuel quickly obviously runs that second unit. Obi Toppin 
they tend to use them as a floor spacer a lot of the time. Like they, they theoretically could have enough floor spacing in that situation to be able to accentuate Hart. Uh, additionally, he gives them real lineup versatility for if RJ Barrett doesn't have it that night. And they've been more than willing to go away from RJ Barrett recently, if you've noticed. Like mm -hmm. there have been a lot of lineups where it's Emmanuel Quickly, Jalen Brunson, Quentin Grimes out there with Julius Randle and Mitch been a lot of lineups where they've been willing to kind of experiment and see what's going on Hart gives them a, a little bit more size to be able to do that I think there are going to be games I think where Josh Hart closes they're gonna be games where they can go super small like they could theoretically I don't know if I'd do this often but in the right lineups could go something weird like you know Jalen Brunson Quentin Grimes Josh Hart RJ Barrett and Julius Randle to close games right mm -hmm. And just see what happens. Like, that's a super aggressive, energetic uh, lineup if RJ is defending. I think that's kind of been the sneaky thing that has been a bit disappointing about the Knicks this year. Yeah, RJ's defense I don't know, some shit this year for being blind. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what happened to RJ Barrett defensively. He was good the year that they made the playoffs and won, like, you know, whatever – like the equivalent of like 48 games or whatever they won in that shortened season. Yeah. He right? was on like my sub all defense team that year. He was really good in his role. I, I was really hopeful for what the next steps would be. Um, I think part of the hope is like, he gets back to that. Um, yeah. And also I just need to amend myself. He's not going to start. Like I said that I forgot RJ existed for a second, which tells you what his yeah. season has been like, but like, um, he's still averaging 20 points. That's a funny thing. Yeah. Like, well, yeah, RJ's he's been, like a, he's been better like... recently, but yeah, it's just like the, yeah. a lot of the season has been different, but um, yeah, I, I echo a lot of the same sentiments. I think just again, adding somebody who, who fits a lot of what they want and can give them like, I, I mean, he can play two through four essentially like, yes. And I know people are mentioning in the comments, like he, he has the yips right now. He needs to get rid of it. Cause like, remember last year, she like six or seven threes a game when he had uh never forget the, all the, the freedom. Josh the Josh Hart 34% usage stretch was like, I think that was my favorite stretch of basketball last year. Um, like I need him to get not obviously not back to 32% usage, but like, I really believe in him being like, if he is confident and in, in the shot, that is, that's a real starting level player. Like that's just a real player who does positive things who has to be guarded. And I, so I, I think betting on this is fine. Cause I, again, like mentioning the comments, like somebody said, is he really worth a first round pick? I think for where the Knicks are at right now, what they're trying to do. Yes. With that pick likely being yeah. like in the late twenties, you hope that you hit and get a guy like Josh Hart in the late well, 20s. Yeah. So like, so like that pick will probably be, it's the New York pick. Uh, it's lottery protected and then it converts to four seconds apparently. And let's assume the Knicks make the playoffs. I think we should assume the Knicks make the playoffs. Yeah. Let's say it's around like 2022, 20, something like that. This draft class, let's say it's around 2022, like, or it's around 22 or so, right? Like, I'm fine with trading out of the 22nd pick, especially too. Like, I am too. In it's this worth class. too. I think this is also the, and part of what makes it this difficult, I think part of this is the front office realizing if we draft somebody with the 22nd pick, is Tibbs going to play them? Like, is Tibbs going to make them a meaningful part of the rotation? Do we believe in them in being able to develop under Tom Thibodeau? Yep. I think that's, again, that's part of the problem. But that's part of the trade-off and why you make this trade, I think. Yep. And, and look, like, the Nets just got worse, right? Like, the Knicks theoretically are the next team up in terms of if the Nets fall out of the top six, which I think that they're positioned to do, frankly, as we talked about earlier – I feel pretty good about the Knicks being that next team up. They're four games ahead of Toronto, three games ahead of Chicago, two and a half games ahead of the Hawks. That's Those are like fairly large numbers at this size of the year. Not enormous numbers, but fairly large numbers. And Josh Hart's going to help them do that. Like he's going to help them make the playoffs. Super smart player. I, I you know, I, 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 I got to say too, Hart. especially with Miami not doing anything like, which that love that's a whole other thing. Don't don't get me started on that. I was very annoyed that Miami did nothing at this deadline. Um, but yeah, like I think I, I'm not going to say that they can come out and get home court. Like something would really have to go wrong for one of the top four teams. But I think it's yeah. very realistic that this team could end up with the five seed. And when you look at that, like they have played Cleveland well this year. 
Yeah. So I think when you look at that, that's that's enticing for them. And I'm not saying that I would pick them to beat Cleveland, but I don't know if I'm picking Cleveland to beat them either because Cleveland has really struggled with what the Knicks can do when they're playing at their best. Um, yep. So I would be, yeah. I, I again, I'm, I've just enjoyed being able to enjoy the Knicks again this year. I think it's my biggest thing because uh, losing that last year like took a small piece of my soul because the, like you <laughs> mentioned, the 2021 Knicks were just were awesome. It was tough. It was tough last year. 